And welcome back. Today we are flying out the P-47M and that's the M4 Marco who is French. So this is already starting to be a bit of an L. But in all seriousness, should you buy this thing, it's a little bit of a hit or miss. It's a good plane. However, it doesn't fit the current meta because the matches don't last long enough. It's a plane you're supposed to play very slowly. However, you can't in the current War Thunder. Before we get started, thank you to all my patrons and to everyone looking to buy anything from the store. Just like this pack maybe. Discount link in the description. Decal will come soon. But through current circumstances, you can't really play this thing as intended. Which makes it a bit of a pain sometimes. Because it's a pretty slow plane to play. It's not a fuck it we ball plane. But you kind of forced to fly it like one. Because side climbing is not really an option. If you are a P47 fan... I kind of recommend you to just fly the P47 D28 or the D30 in the Chinese factory. I've covered both of these vehicles. They're pretty damn solid. But P47, because of the way that the game kind of transitioned, it's not the best anymore. And you can get away with a lot of it. You have a lot of guns. You have 850 cals. They hit pretty good. But still, you don't have that instantaneous turn. You don't have that... Amazing acceleration. You are a slow plane. You are a very fast plane. But you have to play it very carefully and slow. However, that is extremely boring. That's what I'm trying to do here. But I just noticed it's not going to work. The Key 83 is chasing me. The RE 2005s are kind of like circling around him. And the RE 2005 is not exactly a stellar aircraft anymore. Nothing like it was a few years ago. Right now it has the performance that's very close to the F Mark 9 Spitfire. And yes you heard me right. The F Mark 9, the 4.31. Not the LF Mark 9. And arguably, or not even arguably, it's worse than the F Mark 9. However it does have slightly better guns. It has 3 MG151s which is of course superior than the 2 wing mounted 20mm that you get on the F Mark 9. So the flight performance isn't exactly stellar. But I still want to be aware of the guns. And... I can fly it like this and I can climb to like 8 kilometers and start out running the Key 83 and do like fancy stuff. But it's not going to work. I don't have the time for this. The entire enemy team is on the deck. My team isn't doing particularly well. And right now the Key 83 is isolated. So I'm going to take this dogfight. And I'm going to be starting with spraying in the adult. Now he kind of sets up for a reversal. I'm coming in a little bit too quick. He rotates around. He's definitely trouble dropping. And I overshoot. Now... Not all hope is lost just yet. I probably could have used my air brakes right here. They're pretty damn effective. But for now I'm just going to try to stay outside of his guns. Because if I do that eventually I will end up behind him again. I just turn better than him. All I have to do is stay somewhat slow. And if I get behind him at any stage at this point. He is going to be dead. And that's mainly because he won't be able to extend away. He's going to be too close to us. Look at that. Just like that we instantly get on the 6. He can dive away. He can't really do much right now. So you want to be somewhat careful. And funnily enough, we're going to dogfight a lot of guys this game. Two RE 2005, well, one RE 2005, an N1K somewhat, a Key 84, and that Key 83. And the Key 83, funnily enough, is actually going to give me the most amount of issues. Why? Well, I'll show you in due time. Thank you, Burgerman, for the good luck. I'm going to need it. We have an RE 2005 above us, and he is going to be diving on us. I can outrun this guy pretty handily, but he does have a significant altitude advantage, which he can put into dive speed. So he might be able to catch us. I think I'll be fine if I just kind of straight line it to a very shallow dive. He shouldn't be able to get too close to us because our top speed is so much higher than his that it's kind of ridiculous. He can dive pretty quick, but his frame and his engine will not sustain that kind of speed. So if I just stay above like 700, 720... If we kind of level out, he's going to be dropping a lot of it. And I can run away from this guy, wait forever. But again, I do not have the time for this. So I can try to outrun this guy, play the long game, play it as it's intended. But I'm trying to win here. I'm not trying to preserve my plane. I'm trying to win the match. So I notice that he's catching us. I might as well just full send it. I should compress a little bit less than him. He's going to have a hard time getting a shot here. As we say that, we almost get cut in half. Only MGs connect luckily. And now we are in a bit of a pickle. He is much faster. He turns better than us. And all I want to do now is set up for the stall shot. Which I have been doing from the start here. I drop the flaps. Just in the last second. Get a little bit of extra nose authority. And it's good night. RE 2005. If I had missed that. Definitely I would have tried to dive away and outrun him. However. 
at that point it's going to be a very long haul to get to kill him mainly because he is going to be able to climb on my six and i need to be able to use my speed i will eventually get above him but again i don't have the time for that it's already 10 minutes into the game and i only have two kills and it's still like two versus four another re2005 which just appears on the right well quite above the horizon he's above us yet again then we have an N1K, a K84, and a Junker 288. What do we do? Simple. We dive towards our teammate. Why? Because if I go about 600, he is not going to be very easily catching us. So I'm just trying to get him to go lower. And every meter of altitude that he drops, he is not going to regain. Especially in this 2v1 situation. P51H absolutely walks all over that thing. And I mean, so do I. But again, it's going to take me... A lot more time than something like a P51H would. So I noticed that the P51H is going to engage him. He's going head on. And for now I'm just going to be flying away. If he goes for me. P51H gets his 6. He's going to lose a lot of speed. Now P51H starts engaging the RA2005. Which just kind of prompts me to turn around. Why? Because I have a feeling the P51H is going to lose this fight. The RA2005 turns well. It's very annoying to get off you once it latches on. And I'm kind of expecting this P51 to just die. He already got hit. He's already smoking. I'm just trying to reel him in right now. And get the RE2005 to break off. If he doesn't, that's fine with me as well. Because the closer I get, the faster we go. The easier of a time we are going to have killing this dude. So he turns in. I'm just going to shoot in the head on. I got like 3000 rounds. I'm going to use all of them. Hold the trigger down. Hit him like 2 or 3 times. Set him on fire. Not exactly a durable plane. He goes straight vertical. And now he's stalled out. Burning. And... You're welcome P51 for clearing your 6. He then misses all the shot and instantly showcases to the world why he needed help with an RE2005 flying a P51H with a full web tank. You know, amazing. So, we are gonna put it back into a climb. We have 14 minutes of fuel left, but we don't have 14 minutes of web left. Unfortunately, the web on this thing is limited. So, again, we are on the clock. Something I've been saying a lot this video and that's just because you are. I try to push head on with the Kia 84. I have a lot more speed coming into this. And I know the P51H is around here somewhere. So I'm trying to abuse the fact that I have a lot more speed than him. I'm going to put this into a little bit of a spiral. I'm going to use the flaps here to turn around just a little bit quicker. To latch onto this guy 6. And once we get a solution here. We will be able to just spray him down. But the Kia 84 is actually sentient. And he's not going to continue turning in front of us. He's going to turn in front of us, but downwards. And he's going to pick up some speed. He's going to make this shot a little bit harder. And forces us to break off. I'm going to use my speed to exit right now. And I'm going to put it all back into altitude. And notice that the P51H is coming back in. And I'm going to start using the fact that I'm faster than him. I'm going to use all my speed to gradually go into altitude. And then I start stalling this guy out. N1K pops up and I start to get a little bit pressed. I need to do something now. And when I tell people, be careful with energy trapping. Especially if you misread someone's energy state. Which I kind of did. Especially if your enemy has a low, low stall speed. Which this guy has. Now this is not a 50-50. The chance of me dying here is quite high. But I have to do something. This could have very easily ended me right here. I'm not trying to say that... I didn't clench my buttholes in the live game right here. That everything was going according to plan. That could have ended me. But I was trying to bait him up. I was trying to bait him in front of the P51H. I mistimed it somewhat. And now I'm forced to full send it for the Ki-84. I'm not going to let this P51H once you want the Ki-84 on the deck. And let me deal with the N1K on like equal energy. Because we, I already have a feeling that that P51H is going to achieve absolutely nothing. We're going 800, so we compress a little bit. And I'm going to exit right now. And I already know exactly what is going to happen. The P51H is so busy trying to steal another kill of mine. That he is completely oblivious to the fact that he is getting hosed down. Was he really stealing that kill? No. But it was completely unnecessary. Because that guy was essentially dead. He sacrificed his plane to get a free kill. He didn't get it. And now we are probably going to lose this match because of that. I'm about to run out of web. I have an N1K on me. I'm running out of time yet again. And that's just how this plane is. And at this point I'm forced to do something. I'm going to use my last little bit of remaining web. I thought I had a little bit more than I had here. And I see this guy on my 6. He is slowly gaining. And I'm just going to kind of say fuck it we ball. And the second I decide to go we ball... Well, I run out of web. So I'm just going to push ahead on here. 
I'm just gonna try to at least get some hits in. We do not. I'm gonna try to recommit into the head-on. I'm not able to get much in here. I get a little bit of a hit. Not sure if that's an oil or, or a fuel leak. Either way, it shouldn't do anything in the long run. And at this point, I'm quite confident that I have a lower energy state. He's much higher. He's going about the same speed. So I'm going to try to use the fact that I'm slower than him to cut inside of his flight path. So you can tell me using my flaps a little bit more than I should. I'm just trying to outturn him to get a quick shot in. But I'm sacrificing a lot of speed and this is not sustainable. At this point, I'm going 200 without web. I drop the flaps to get a shot on him. I drop back on top of him. I only get another hit in. So, what do we do? We full send it back after him. At this point, point of no return. I can try to extend away. I can try to run away. I can try to reset the fight. But that's going to end in me dying. This guy is flying it. Not particularly great. But this allows me to get on the 6. And at these kind of speeds, the N1K simply does not turn well enough to really get rid of me. The N1K dogfights quite well. However, it's not something like a 0 and it does struggle a little bit. But you can tell he's out turning me quite handily. But because he keeps his same trajectory up. I am going to be able to cut inside of it. But I think at this point his engine is a little bit damaged. And I'm going to be able to just spray him down. Down he goes. He's on fire. He is in the ground. So we take off. And there is the key 84 from before. Sick bar I know. But again we have like. Was it two or three minutes left on the clock right now? And there is this guy left. Are we going to be able to kill him? In this situation, I'm going to run out of time. Because there's only three minutes left on the clock. No tickets this time. The tickets were actually quite nice on this map. But this key 84 is so damn quick. And you can tell that right there. And there's also that guy. So I need to kill this dude. And then I also need to kill the Junker 288. So I'm on the clock. I'm going to go all in again. And I'm going to try to kill this guy as quickly as humanly possible. He is catching us rapidly and there's really nothing I can do here if he plays his cards right. So what do we do? We pull into him. We make him compress. Oh, he kind of made himself compress. And here he makes the critical mistake of trying to run away from a lower energy P47. All he had to do was hold his S key and I would have died right there. And this is what I mean with be more aggressive if you have the more maneuverable plane with more energy. This... Is the absolute throw of the year. He had me that to right. I'm going only 400 after going straight and diving. And all that good stuff. And look how high he is. He is still outrunning me. So what do I do? The desperate thing. I'm going to give myself the only opportunity. I'm ever going to get shots on this dude. I'm just going to full send it. I'm going to hold my trigger down. I'm going to try to kill his pilot. And that's exactly what we do. This right here is exactly what I mean. I said it earlier with the energy trapping that is dangerous. The second thing right here is right there. Why do you take the head on when you have every conceivable advantage? He didn't expect me to have that much energy. He didn't expect me to not stall out. But when you are in that kind of position, it doesn't matter if I can pull into the head on. When you see me start shooting, you just break off. And there is a no way for me to ever get my positioning back. If I throw that kind of head on. I lost the game. You dodge that head on. And I die. It doesn't matter that you think. He won't be able to get the energy. He won't be able to get the shot. Just don't risk it. I'm the last guy left. What am I going to do? Call for backup. Run to the airfield. When I'm like. 15 kilometers away. I can't even do that. There is nothing I can do there. To get out of the position. If you don't give me the head on. And you see me doing this all the time. If I'm above someone, I'm just going to dodge it. Because if you pull in for that head-on, I got you. There is no getting out of it anymore. You bled your speed. You gave me an opportunity to bleed your speed. And I didn't even have to work for it. So what did he have to do? Just full send it. Hold the S key on my 6. You are more maneuverable. And you are faster. And you win the dogfight. And that sounds like the same thing as more maneuverable. But actually it isn't. But on to the next thing. BF-109 K4. I'm going to start diving out. Why? Because I want to make him compress. The P-47 at higher speeds is much more maneuverable than something like the K4. So I want him to dive on us. And I want to start attempting a little bit of a reversal. He breaks off. And he again plays it a little bit too passive. He gives me too many opportunities. Just like the K-84 to do something here. So after a little bit of flying parallel to him. He finally comes back. 
And again, we're going to do the same thing. I'm trying to get him a little bit faster. And this does not guarantee our victory. Not at all. Because the lower we go, the bigger his advantage becomes in terms of relative performance. So I don't want to go too low. And he keeps pushing me down. He then breaks off. And he just starts climbing behind us. Remember what I said. Not taking risk is more risky than taking some risk. If you're not shooting at me. If you're not getting shots on me. If you're not actually putting pressure on me. You're not going to be killing me. And if you're not killing me. That means I have the opportunity to keep killing you. Is this unlikely most of the time? Sure. But playing it uber passive. And just trying to stay alive. At all costs. Is going to. Well open. Give me some openings for an attack. So he finally dives on us. Is he going to do it? Yes he does. He does dive on us. I'm going to pull up over him. And he does somewhat the right thing. But again it's just too passive. He just tries to bank all of his speed. He just tries to use his energy. Even though he could have just turned into my loop right there. Now I'm going pretty slow. I'm going to cut into his flight path. I'm going to predict where he's going. And we do exactly that. We get on the 6. Now he's way too slow. And if you are slow. And on someone 6. You don't need to pull much to get a shot. It doesn't matter if he turns better than you. It doesn't matter if he's a 0. If he's a Spitfire or whatever the shit he is flying. If you're going like two to 300 kilometers ahead of someone and you start turning. You are basically flying in place and you're not going anywhere. And it's the same deal as with biplanes. The video that I made like two days ago. It doesn't matter how well you turn if you're going very slow. It's the same analogy. If you draw a big circle very fast or you draw a small circle super slow. The bigger circle is harder to hit. Just because he's so much quicker. If someone is basically flying in place. What is he going to do? Nothing. He is just going to be dead. He needed to go vertical right there. He kept going vertical. He kept trying to play energy. And then the millisecond I get on him. He tries to dive into my guns. It's not going to work. So now we have another problem of this vehicle. You're going to be running into this thing quite often. It's the Junker 288. The same reason we lost the last match. It's just not fun to fight. Very often you get this. Well, like a 6v6 match. The enemy will have 6 players. 4 of which will be bombers. And then 2 will be a fighter. 1 will probably be a Tau 152H. And then another one will be something like a K4. That starts ground pounding for no reason. It's not very fun to fight. Your entire team is stacked with F2Gs. P51Hs. FU4Bs that aren't actually that amazing anymore. Because the guns got shafted. But this makes the plane kind of annoying to play. And it's not because it's bad. The plane is great. Just in the wrong places. And with the current meta. Especially with the 6v6 matches. That turn into a 1v6 basically. On the first fighter that your team sees. You need to have that instant performance. You need to be able to just throw yourself in there. Get a kill or two. The F2G is still a better pick. Over this thing. Why? Because you can go fast. You can go super fast on the deck. You can be almost untouchable. And guess what? It's cheaper too. So you can just full send it, get some kills in and then start ground pounding. This thing is also good at ground pounding. Don't get me wrong. You have amazing payload options. The 50 kills shred through every kind of pillbox that you find. It kills AA, it kills artillery, it kills almost everything that isn't the hard target. And that makes it great for that kind of RP farming. But the F2G can do that too, but it's more effective... In terms of air to air combat. Sure this thing is great at in absolute orbit. But when are you actually there? And very often planes like this thing right here. The F or the F2G. The Tau 152 H's. With their air spawn. They're going to be above you. They're going to be pushing you down. And your high altitude performance means absolute dick all. Unless you start actual side climbing. But if you side climb you run out of time. And then you either. Your team just wins. Because it mops up the, the only two fights that the enemy has. Or you run out of time trying to carry like we did like two the games ago. Now we're almost stalling out. I noticed that Spitfire coming in. I'm just going to spray him down. Why should I not? I have all the ammo in the world. My team is already kind of winning. And the Spitfire is something I don't want to deal with. I have 850 kills. I'm just going to hold the trigger down. And I'm going to be super aggressive coming into these head-ons. I'm trying to force them to break off. I'm trying to scare them away. And if it doesn't scare them away. Well it's very likely that my rounds will connect. And it might potentially just outright kill them. So then I noticed the 109K4. Well I only know it's a K4 because he... Well it's post commentary. 
So I'm going to start chasing him. And he's completely oblivious to me. So I'm just closing down the gap. He's flying straight. All I have to do is kind of hold the trigger down. But my aim is atrocious. Because this is the first game I did in the damn thing. And you can definitely tell. So I drop my throttle. And I'm just going to try to stay behind him. I don't need to fret about outturning him. If I just stay slower than him. Is this a good idea overall? Definitely not. But we are alone here. And I have all the room and time in the world. To kill this guy. So I just want to make sure I don't overshoot. And kill him as quickly as possible. K4 goes down. And we are going to reset. And see if we can fight those guys over there. Spitfire mainly. So I'm going to put it into a little bit of a climb. And see if I can get away from the middle of the map. F2G gets set on fire. And there's still some enemies left. And there's a Spitfire. Yuka 288. And a guy that I have no clue on where he is. If that's proper English. I do not know. But you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm trying to climb. And then I notice the Focker Wolf 190 directly above us. We're not going particularly quick. He doesn't see us just yet. So what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to die for the Spitfire. Try to kill him as quickly as possible. And turn this into a 2v1. However I lied when I said he didn't see us yet. He did. He just tried to get a better position on our 6. So what do I do? I'm going to try to dive past his top speed. So that when he levels out. And when he starts flying away again. He's going to bleed a lot of energy. I tried to go for the Spitfire. He's too close. I'm forced to pull in. I'm going to be slower than him. He has me energy trapped at this point. But I'm going to have initial advantage here. Because I'm going to be able to spray this guy down. With the 1600 rounds that I still have. Spitfire goes down to the A6M6. And I'm just going to keep tap firing at this guy. I'm trying to make this guy maneuver. I'm trying to keep this guy as slow as possible. You can see that I'm trying to kind of cut off his flight path. Why? To stay as close as possible. This is very much an all in maneuver. But he's going extremely slow. And this is the situation we were in. With the key 84 earlier. I have a lot lower stall speed. I turn better. And I have the energy to pull into him. Because he made such a wide loop. So I crit him. And now he's just tumbling out of the air. And all I need to make sure now. Is that he actually dies to us. He is not doing particularly great. He's going to try to dive out. But I still have 900 rounds. And it's a D9 at close range. He's not going very fast anymore. He's badly damaged. And he's just a massive sitting duck. So I'm just going to tap fire him out of the air. Until he finally dies. I'm trying to use my wing guns. And th this is when the 600 meters convergence. Definitely comes in. Uh, not exactly as a benefit. And that's why I tell people. Use your own conversions. And use whatever you're comfortable with. We finally kill him. And that's going to be the video. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.